What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be testing out the Dragon's Breath Exotic Rocket Launcher in the Wrath of the Machine Raid. Now the Dragon's Breath is a pretty interesting exotic. Its exotic perk is called Napalm, and what it does is light everything on fire. Now moving on, no I'm just kidding, what it actually does is when you shoot the Dragon's Breath, it's also going to shoot kind of a canister of Napalm. This canister, when it detonates, is going to leave a very large area of effect fire that damages any enemies that go through it. Now the canister does have some unique properties. If you shoot and add directly, you can actually see the canister bouncing off and then when it hits the ground, it will detonate and light that area on fire. So you actually want to shoot enemies feet, especially if you're damaging bosses, rather than the enemies directly. Furthermore, you can actually shoot this weapon and hold the trigger and then when you let go, the napalm will detonate at that point. Also, really interestingly, the Dragon's Breath has Surplus as one of the perks it spawns with. That means that when you pick up a heavy ammo drop, you can get much more ammunition than normal, up to four rockets from a single heavy ammo drop. So, in terms of ammo consumption, the Dragon's Breath is going to be much better on its own with no other factors than most other heavy weapons, just because of that Surplus perk. In fact, I actually made a video yesterday about the Ultimate Rockets build, combining the Dragon's Breath with a bunch of other gear that increases heavy ammo drops, like the Raid Gauntlets that increase heavy ammo drops with Fallen. That's a wombo combo, and that's what you're seeing in today's video. So, how bright does the Dragon's Breath burn in the Wrath of the Machine raid? I couldn't help myself. By the way guys, if you enjoy this video, please remember to help support it by simply liking and especially sharing. Probably should have made that pitch before I made that awful pun, but whatever. Let's start with the very first section of the Wrath of the Machine raid. The first Vosik encounter where you force him to flee. In this encounter, the Dragon's Breath is sadly pretty average. The Dragon's Breath is actually fantastic at dealing with large groups of adds. It can completely lock down an area, but just the way this encounter is built, you don't have a bunch of adds funneling out of spawn points, which is what the Dragon's Breath is best at dealing with. Like, the most you can do is you can plant a perfect Dragon's Breath shot right when the Voltage Eater and the other two shanks are spawning. You absolutely damage the crap out of the Voltage Eater and kill the other shanks. Like, it's decent there. It's definitely not below average, but it's nothing special. Like, three adds at a time, that's nothing a normal rocket launcher can't deal with on its own. Now, for damaging Vosik, it's decent. You get the blast from the rocket, and you also get the napalm, doing a lot more damage than your average rocket launcher. The Dragon's Breath is, of course, because of that napalm, just going to vastly out-damage any normal legendary rocket launcher. But even with that being said, it wasn't doing a phenomenal amount of damage against Vosik, and actually in the next encounter we really get into the specifics of the damage numbers. So in this first outside encounter, I'd say a 5 out of 10. It's perfectly average, it's decent against the adds, decent against damaging Vosik, but it's not above average in this encounter. Moving on, however, we do have more of a chance for the Dragon's Breath to shine with the second Vosik encounter. And let's start off with what I mentioned earlier, crunching the damage numbers. I'm sure you guys are curious to see how much damage this thing actually does. And to test this, I simply utilized the Dragon's Breath against Vosik for one damage phase entirely with no other factors. No tether, you know, no weapons of light for me or anything like that. And I was able to achieve, for one damage phase, around 214,000 damage. Now that is actually not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. This outpaces something like the Chaos Dogma Raid Scout Rifle. That weapon, due to its triple-double perk, means that you can basically shoot Vosik for the entire damage phase without having to reload. It is definitely considered one of the better weapons to use in the Wrath of the Machine, and it is only doing around 150 to 170 
thousand damage 170 for like the absolute maximum if you land every single one of your headshots so the dragon's breath is outpacing you know again one of the better weapons in the game for the wrath of the machine however of course the chaos dogma is a primary and the dragon's breath is a heavy so it's not quite the fair comparison let's compare it to what i'm sure you guys are wanting to compare it to the Galahorn, the other heavy hitting exotic rock launcher that people love to use in the Wrath of the Machine. Well, did the same thing with the Galahorn, as much damage as I could do in one damage phase with no other factors, and the Galahorn was able to deal 312 thousand damage so essentially a hundred thousand damage more than the dragon's breath and there you have it the dragon's breath simply isn't anywhere near as good against damaging bosses as the galahorn and therefore a lot of you are going to say well why would i use the dragon's breath and fair point if your main goal with your heavy is to put damage on bosses you don't want to use the dragon's breath However, damaging bosses really only encompasses two, two and a half if we're counting the opening section, of the different sections of the Wrath of the Machine. And a lot of the Wrath of the Machine is dealing with adds. That is a huge part of this raid. So how is the Dragon's Breath against the adds? And the first real section where you really have to be on top of the adds is the same Vosik section. So not that amazing against damaging Vosik, but what about the massive amount of adds that spawn? Well, in that aspect, the Dragon's Breath is absolutely fantastic. The way the adds spawn has them really all funnel out of only a few places and you can absolutely light them up, pardon the pun, with napalm when using the dragon's breath. If you're on those right or left sides, you can put a dragon's breath shot at the very back of your section where they all kind of spawn and you can just have no ads to worry about for a good 30 seconds. Every ad that comes out of those doors will run right into the napalm and die pretty much immediately. Any enemies that get through are extremely low on health. It's actually great for area of denial. It is so good against the ads in this encounter. If you're in the middle, being able to put a Dragon's Breath shot in that very middle section where all of the ads drop down to, heck, you can shoot the Dragon's Breath when there's no ads there just in anticipation. The napalm lasts for quite a while and he'll just see all of the ads dropping down and immediately dying as they fall into the flames. So how is this weapon overall for this encounter? Well, I'd have to say with all things considered, 7 out of 10 for the second Vosik encounter. Well above average. Not good against Vosik, yes, but why wouldn't you just use a snipe rifle instead and then use your Dragon's Breath for ad clearing? And that would actually be a pretty effective build. Now, moving on to the next section of the Wrath of the Machine raid, we have the Siege Engine Encounter. Now, this encounter doesn't have any boss to deal damage to, it's all adds. And, as you'd expect, the Dragon's Breath is on fire in this encounter. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Anyways, for the first part of the Siege Engine encounter, you have a ton of adds spawning. A ton of adds spawning out of relatively the same places. The Dragon's Breath is fantastic here. You can light that entire area up with Napalm and kill so many enemies. One shot, like before your team, will not only kill a bunch of dregs with the initial explosion, but also kill so many more as they're spawning right into the flames. You will still likely need a bubble to help defend your team or another player using hammers or a Stormcaller Warlock to help you deal with the adds, but there's no doubt that the Dragon's Breath in this opening part of the encounter is very effective against dealing with the multitude of adds that press you early. Moving on though, we have the second half of the Siege Engine encounter, and in this encounter, it's actually pretty decent as well. I loved sniping the very spot where all of the enemies would drop down from the ship and just watching them all fall into the flames and die. Like, it was actually great. Now, granted, you're dealing with the captain mainly, and he is going to be able to survive the flames with a decent amount of health, but having no other enemies to deal with because they're all dead is definitely advantageous. 
and I definitely had an instance in this second encounter of the surplus perk doing work in combination with the raid gauntlets and I was able to just shoot so many dragon's breath rounds. The problems with those rounds is that, again, they don't actually kill the captains in a single shot. No, that's not great, but it deals with all of the other adds. And so if one other teammate with a shotgun is anywhere near there, and he has a bunch of half-damaged captains to deal with, that's not that bad. Because all the other enemies are long Ted at that point. So yes, it is a bit of a drawback that doesn't do enough damage to kill one of the yellow health captains in a single shot, but it makes up for it for, again, killing everything else. So, overall, in the Siege Engine encounter, I would have to say another 7 out of 10. Definitely above average. Very impressed with how good it dealt with ads in this encounter. And again, you have situations like when the skiffs are dropping ads all into the same area, where lighting that area on fire with the napalm is very, very effective, and the dragon's breath can shine there. Now let's move on to the next encounter with Axis Phase 1. Now this encounter is yet again all adds, but they are a little bit more spread apart. You don't have skiffs dropping them all in one area. They come out of a few doors and they come, you know, decently spaced apart. So you don't really have a chance. The Dragon's Breath, you know, is still good. You can still land a great shot and deal with a bunch of adds through the napalm, but it doesn't really have the same opportunity to shine in this very beginning section where you're getting the elemental cannon. And again, the part where you can't kill one of the captains with a single shot isn't that amazing, and especially this captain seems to love to warp out of the napalm right away, so you don't actually do that much damage, so it's not that fantastic in that very beginning section. However, once you, of course, grab the cannons, shoot some servitors, throw some SIVA bombs, you're then going to have a crap ton of shanks coming down from the ceiling and all going to the same spot. I think you guys can see where I'm going with this because if you shoot a Dragon's Breath round, you can actually shoot it in the middle of that arena. You'll see me do it here. And the napalm it leaves is large enough to damage both streams of shanks coming down from the ceiling. And as you can see here, one shot from the Dragon's Breath and all of the shanks will die. They just fall into the flames and die immediately. How awesome is that? One shot from the Dragon's Breath. 10 plus, like 10 to 15 shanks killed. That is fantastic. And then of course when the napalm goes away, you just shoot again. Like you can basically kill all of the shanks that fall from the ceiling. All like 50 of them with a few shots of Dragon's Breath. And the rest of your team doesn't have to do anything. Like that is some next level Wrath of the Machine raid tactics. I definitely didn't expect this. Like this is pretty crazy effective. Usually to deal with the shanks you're making a fire team member, you know, shoot a tether up above or down below to slow them down while everyone has to shoot at them. Nope, that's not necessary. Everyone just needs to stand back as you use your dragon's breath. So in this encounter, I've got to say, basically because of that, it's a 7 or an 8 out of 10. Like, that is so awesome that you can deal with that huge, somewhat problematic section of this encounter, and for the rest of the section, it's pretty decent as well. So, as we're moving on to the last encounter of the Wrath of the Machine Axis Phase 2, it has to be said that the Dragon's Breath is doing pretty well. I'm sure a lot of you didn't actually expect that. Not so great against bosses, yes, but pretty damn good in a lot of different portions of the Wrath of the Machine raid. Pretty good against the adds in general. And I was really, really interested to see how the Dragon's Breath would do against Axis because, of course, one of the very interesting features of Axis as a boss is that you're able to damage several of his hitboxes at once. That's why the Dark Drinker Void Exotic Sword is so effective. You can do that spinning move and you can actually hit multiple of his legs so you have way more damage popping up. And I thought, of course, with the Napalm, could you actually do the same thing? If you put the Napalm underneath Axis, could you damage all of his legs at the same time and just like throw your DPS numbers through the roof? Well, it turns out, when you shoot Axis, right underneath Axis, with the Dragon's Breath, as you can see here, the damage numbers do nothing. 
They don't pop up. The napalm, for whatever reason, for whatever weird way Bungie coded access, I honestly don't know how this is happening, but the napalm does not damage access at all. Like, you'll see it burning right underneath him, and no damage numbers are popping up. Yes, you get the initial damage numbers from the initial explosion of the rocket. That's going to do a decent amount of damage, but the actual napalm does nothing. And of course, if that's the case, the Dragon's Breath is pretty terrible in this encounter. Like, there's no reason to use the Dragon's Breath because the exotic perk is null and void. I mean, you might as well just use a regular legendary rock launcher if you just want the initial explosion damage to pop up. So for this section, I mean, it's okay against the shanks, I guess. And yeah, you can lock down a whole section and have a bunch of shanks go into the napalm. That's all great. But it's so bad against axes. I have to say, for this final section, I hate to do it because... We're actually going pretty well with the Dragon's Breath, but for this final section, I'd have to say 3 out of 10. It is below average. There's no reason to use the Dragon's Breath in this final Axis encounter. And in fact, you'll see me realize that and end up switching to just damaging him with the Ex Machina. So I'm not even using the Dragon's Breath for the rest of this hard mode raid. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did try to shoot Axis in a bunch of different ways, tried to light the fire on him exactly. It doesn't work, the canister just bounces off anyways. So an unfortunate way to end the legacy of the Dragon's Breath. But how did this rocket launcher fare throughout the entire raid? What is the ranking for this rocket launcher overall in the Wrath of the Machine? Well, even though it's not that good against the bosses, doesn't do that much damage to Vosek and does crap all damage to Axis, its ad clearing potential cannot be denied. It's so good with killing ads in the Vosik encounter, so good with killing ads in the Siege Engine encounter, that I have to say, overall, the Dragon's Breath is a 6.5 out of 10 in the Wrath of the Machine raid. It's definitely not top tier, and if you're used to running the Galahorn, it's probably best to stick with it. But if you want to switch it up, and have pretty much constant ammo for your rocket launcher, the surplus perk of the Dragon's Breath and the Raid Gauntlet Scavenger Boon perk, just that combination is no joke. You're gonna have rockets flying all the time. So while the Dragon's Breath doesn't exactly belong with the absolute top tier exotic heavy weapons like the Sleeper Simulant and the Galahorn, and if you're really serious about beating the raid like you've never beaten it before or something, you should probably run one of those instead if you want to run an exotic heavy. But if you want to switch it up and have a decent amount of fun and fire for doing so, the Dragon's Breath is something you might want to consider. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more combinations of certain weapons versus certain raids, leave it in the comment section down below. If you want to see more Destiny content from me, the best way is to slap that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, press that little bell beside subscribe. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.